Hi guys, my name is Ams Chowdhury and I'm a medical doctor working in the UK. Myself and Abdul initially thought that enough was being said about the coronavirus. However, with current developments and progress, as well as the different followings that we have, we thought that it would be wise and responsible of ourselves to first learn about the current pandemic and to also put out some evidence-based information that's in line with Public Health England, the NHS, and to just also tell you guys what is generally happening. Now, first thing first, it is absolutely vital that information is sourced from reliable sources. Now, I was watching television the other day and I noticed that the government has had to actually team up with Facebook and other social media platforms to carry out fact screens. And it's vital because the wrong information will cause anxiety and panic to settle into the population, which will have dire consequences. Now, some reliable sources of information include the Public Health England, the NHS, peer review journals, and now the government is actually daily updating the public on the news. Now, it's important that you guys all tune in to stay informed. As the hashtag that's flying around goes, we need to stay alert, not anxious. In a nutshell, the coronavirus is not the first of its kind. We have had other strains of this virus cause outbreaks previously, and they include SARS-CoV in 2003 and MERS in 2012. The difference was, was that the rate of transmission and spread was a lot slower and it was not as widespread. Today's pandemic is strictly speaking SARS-C2, coronavirus 2, and COVID simply stands for coronavirus disease 19 for when it was first detected. Now, in terms of timeline, on the third 31st of December 2019, the World Health Organization's WHO was informed of a cluster of atypical pneumonias of an unknown cause detected in Wuhan, China. Now, on the 12th of January 2020, it was announced that a novel coronavirus had been identified from samples taken from these atypical cases of pneumonia. Now, the initial viral genetic sequence analysis suggested that this was the cause of the outbreak. The virus today is referred to as SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19. Now, as of the 19th of March 2020, over 211,000 cases have been diagnosed in 164 countries and areas including mainland China, with over 8,000 fatalities. Of these totals, 130,000 cases and more than 5,500 deaths have been reported in countries outside of China. In the 15 days leading up to the 19th of March, over 120,000 cases have been reported. Now, just to throw out a few more statistics, in the UK today, there are 3,938 confirmed cases with 177 deaths. There are now 714 daily coronavirus cases confirmed in the UK, and worldwide, there are 284,566 confirmed cases, with the top three countries being China, Italy, and Iran. Worldwide, there have been over 11,868 deaths. So, the question is, how has this become a pandemic? A pandemic is a global outbreak of a disease, and it happens in this case when a new virus emerges and infects people and transmits sustainably. Now, as a result, the coronavirus is defined as a pandemic because of the sheer transmission rate. It has actually been phenomenal, the way it has spread from one person to another, from country to country, and it's because there has been little to no pre-existing immunity against this virus, and unfortunately, Unfortunately, it is taking lives with it. Now, the mortality rate of the coronavirus is between 1 to 3.5%. Now, whilst this is low, if you consider the rate of infection and the number of people becoming infected, 3.5% or even 1%, it is a huge number of people that have their lives at risk. Now, the question is, how is COVID-19 spreading so fast? It is thought that the spread of the disease is currently via droplet transmission, and so the virus itself comes into direct contact with us, in which it makes contact with our respiratory system, mainly our mouths, our noses, and our eyes. Now, the government has really been pushing to wash our hands, and that's because the virus will be on surfaces. It's really unknown for how long it is active for, whether it's from hours to days, but usually contact with our hands and then we then transfer it to our mouths, noses and eyes, or transfer it to someone else in which it causes an infection. And that's how it spreads like wildfire. 
Now, it has also been suggested that is air transmittable within a distance of a meter of an individual infected with COVID-19 who is actively producing these droplets, whether it's through coughing and sneezing. And therefore, the government have advised at least a two meter distance from someone who is infected. Now, the symptoms of COVID-19 are usually that of the common cold slash the flu. The symptoms include a fever, a dry cough, aches and pains and shortness of breath. Now it's been suggested that most patients will actually experience the symptoms at a mild level but dependent on age, other conditions and comorbidities as well as how severely it affects the lungs it will determine whether you require hospital assessment and support. So if you're young, fit and healthy the symptoms can be expected to be mild in character however add age into the mix and other conditions and this virus can severely compromise the body. Unfortunately this virus has been taking lives particularly those those who have aged and are elderly and those living with other conditions such as asthma, COPD, cancers and heart conditions. Note, there have been cases of young fit individuals requiring ITU care and please understand that being young fit and healthy does not mean you are invincible to this virus. Just now in fact, just a while ago I was looking at Instagram and on a story I read that a colleague of mine the senior nurse was taken into ITU because of how severely short of breath she was. So what happens if you are infected with the coronavirus? Well, as with any other virus, your body's immune system battles the virus, produces antibodies and overcomes the virus to allow you to recover. Now, the problem is that with viral infections, it usually takes a little bit of time and the symptoms and the compromise it causes to your body can be problematic. If you are admitted into hospital, we ensure that patients are adequately hydrated and we support any failing organs. Now, what we've seen most commonly is that the lungs are most severely affected and that oxygen therapy is common now. Now, this might mean that you receive oxygen just through a mask. However, it can be as severe as requiring intubation, i.e. being on a ventilator whereby a machine essentially does all the work for the lungs. So what should you do if you feel you are symptomatic with COVID-19? Well, your action is dependent on the country that you are in and the guidance that is being provided by your healthcare service and the government. In the United Kingdom, if you are symptomatic, you should dial 111 in which you will be appropriately advised or go through the NHS website in which you'll be triaged and also receive appropriate advice. If you are mildly symptomatic, as of today, the current advice is that you should isolate for seven days. But if you are in a household with someone else that is displaying symptoms, Symptoms, you should isolate for 14 days. That difference is because most likely you have been exposed and it's also to allow you to also recover from that. Social distancing and does it work? Social distancing are steps or measures that are taken to reduce social interaction and that's to reduce and limit the rate of transmission of the coronavirus. Now they include number one avoiding contact with someone who is displaying signs and symptoms of COVID-19. Number two avoid non-essential use of public transport. Number three work from home if possible Number four, avoid large and small gatherings in the public space. Number five, avoid gatherings with friends and family. Number six, use the telephone or online services to contact your GP or other essential services. Now you need to take more stringent precautions, particularly if you're over 70, pregnant or live with any underlying conditions. So where to now? What's going to happen in the future? Well, the government has now implemented measures to now socially distance the public. This will crucially limit and slow down the rate of transmission of the coronavirus which will support the healthcare service to keep up and support those who have been severely affected. Now there are several vaccines and several antivirals that are being tested out there globally and optimistically thinking it's a matter of when rather than if and hopefully we should be able to come out of this pandemic crisis. Thank you guys for listening and I hope this video has made things a little bit more clearer. See you guys otherwise in the next video.